Can I get a, a sparkling water and two cheeseburgers? Yes. Anything else? Yeah, sure. Can I have a um, 20 chicken nuggets, big tasty bacon burger? Would you like any sauce? Sweet and sour sauce? Do you have that? Yes. Do you also have just like a mayonnaise or something? Yes. Okay, sure. Can we also get the french fries shared box? A shared fries? Yeah. Yes. Anything else? Yeah, that should be everything. Then we have number 93 in the next window. Alright, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Jonas is doing today's introduction to this vlog. Why am I doing it? I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm doing it because we're going to visit my parents. They live in um, Jutland, which is another part of Denmark. It's about three hours from Copenhagen, depending on how fast you drive. We are about 150 kilometers away. We're going to spend the weekend there, relax, and do some fun activities. But right now, we're stopping at McDonald's because we're both starving, and we came straight from the office and started driving. Hang on one sec. I forgot. <laughs> Number I think nine? It was nine. Yeah, a big taste. 93, there you go. It's so classic me to forget. Thank you. I think the girls at the cashier were a bit shocked when they saw the camera. Always get McDonald's when we're on our way to Jonas's parents. The worst so. part is that we love doing it, but as soon as we've eaten... Yeah, we feel like crap. <laughs> what did I say? But yeah, anyways, we'll be back soon when we arrive. Yes. New whip burning weed in it. It be hard not to speed in it. I ain't got a lot to you. Talk with a lot of emphasis Like me, only difference is I ain't got a lot to yeah. I'm getting dressed right now because we're heading out the door, but we arrived at Jonas's parents 9 p.m. last night and then we just had some tea and spent some time catching up before going to bed. Um, we were all quite tired. We just slept in and got some breakfast. Now we're heading out to two Christmas markets or farm boutiques, but they have Christmas markets in December. It's gonna be really cute. And then we're gonna go home again and just chill. And then me and Jonas's mom, we're gonna make Christmas crocheted Christmas ornaments. I went to an event a couple of days ago where I got some crochet Recipe, some Christmas ornaments crochet recipes and Jonas's mom she's the one who taught me how to crochet so whenever we visit them I always spend the whole weekend crocheting so we definitely need to do that and yeah then we're gonna maybe bake some Christmas cookies or maybe that will be tomorrow but we're just gonna have a super cozy day so uh, come along for a very cozy Christmas day Everything looks super cute. It's just so expensive. This one is 50 kroner. Like marinades for 45 kroner. Ketchup, 55 kroner. Pasta for 40 kroner. That looks really nice. And I bet the quality is also really good. It looks so nice. I would love to have a kitchen just full with nice things like this. Jonas's parents, they always get this horseradish cream with um, black currant and it's so good. So I think we're getting one for ourselves this time. Okay, uh, now we visited the farm boutique and it was super cute and really expensive. We did get the black currant and horseradish cream and now we're gonna visit another farm shop, I think. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. And otherwise, we're gonna go home. Jenna's parents are filming me being filmed. <laughs> Yeah. 
Ej, hvor er den sød. No. No. Ej. <laughs> We are back home. We went to the two Christmas markets at the farm boutiques. It was super, super cute. Very expensive. Did get one, like, um, what is it called? Like deer sausage. Jonas's dad bought for us. And then also the horseradish cream with like currant. Now we're gonna have some afternoon tea and cake. And then me and Jonas's mom, we're gonna crochet the Christmas ornaments I told you guys about. It's from uh, Rosa Svane. She had an event the other day I attended where she, we crocheted Christmas ornaments and it was super cute. There are also two other recipes I didn't get to try out. I made this star, but she also shared a ro a no, not a rose, a swan, which should be a little bit more difficult, and then also a heart. It's gonna be really cute. So yeah, very cute and cozy day. All my clothes smell like um, burnt wood. Fuck it. I think I'm just gonna get dressed in something a little bit more cozy. I will be wearing this knit, these navy pajama pants for a cozy at home vibe. It's not that this is not cozy, I mean it's just like super soft wool, but there's something about wearing pajama pants at home in a huge chunky knit, so we're gonna do that. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. I've now switched into English. What is that? What should I say? What should we say? Einstein, come on. We're making Danish Kleiner right now. Jonas's mom prepared the dough for us, and it's a kind of like short crust dough, but it's much more fat. Yeah, I tried to look it up in English, but there's no word for it. Well, the only recipes I can find is called fried <laughs> fried Danish twists. You cut out the cake or like the dough, and then you use this tool. And then you need to cool them down and then tomorrow we'll fry them outside because it's gonna create a lot of smoke. So you always do it outside, right? Yeah. We're not even 10 minutes into making the liner and Jonas, he already ruined, ruined the tool. And now we've finished folding all the liner. So we're gonna let them rest overnight outside so they're nice and cold. And then tomorrow we'll deep fry them and then they're ready to eat. Okay guys, we kind of messed up with the Kleiner. So you're supposed to leave them out so they will stay cold so they're easy to handle when you fry them. And we did that but we just didn't cover them properly so <laughs> it had rained on them during the night so they're really really soggy. So I don't even know if it's gonna work with the water in the dough going into the frying oil. We'll test it out and see if it works. All right so we're just gonna do a test now to see if these really <laughs> sloppy ones oh. will work. I mean they should float once they're done but it doesn't seem like the water is affecting the oil too much. Mm. No, but it doesn't look too good. This is something I've been making in my family my whole life. Yeah, this is your grandma's recipe, yeah, right? I don't really have it here, but it's written down on like an old piece of cloth. Or maybe it's not particularly Danish, but most Scandinavian countries. Isn't it? I think it's countries. German. I think I've seen no, it. No, like, is it Norwegian? They yeah. do them as well, but where they're way bigger. So this is just a Danish version. Well, I don't liner. know who did it first, but either way, yeah, it's something we've either. been making in our family every Christmas leading up to Christmas. When I was younger, I used to eat all of them. My parents would get so mad because I had just zero chill and it's funny yeah. how now that Caroline has joined the family, it's me who eats all of them. <laughs> yeah, because they're <laughs> no so chill. good. I think it's done. It looks very crisp. It's super warm still. I mean, it's good, but it's just like, it's not as sweet as it used to. Yeah. We have an extra dough in the fridge. If it's terrible, after we made a couple, we'll go inside and we'll redo the dough. Yeah. Catch you guys in a bit.
Det er de bedste, men jeg synes egentlig, de er okay. But we're gonna wait with that badge for Christmas. But we're just doing it now instead. Yeah, because they're so bad. <laughs> for now, I think we're just gonna wait, and then we'll be back in a few seconds. When my mom's done making the second batch, yeah. don't want to be more. Yeah. A uh, Kleine fit check. I'm wearing moon boots, Tekla pajama pants, Agat puffer, and my I Blame Lulu beanie, my favorite beanie of all time. It's also my only be- only beanie. And what are you wearing, Jonas? <laughs> uh, I'm wearing um, my everyday sneakers from New Balance, gym tracksuit from Seven Days Active, my dad's jacket. I don't want my jacket to smell like fried food. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> oh, and my beanie I borrowed from my friend 15 years ago and forgot to give it back. Shout out to Nicholas. And now we're ready to make Kleiner. Okay, Jonas's mom saved the date. Save the date. Ho, oh, Kleiner is sketch. Shit. Do you feel alt for mal? These are mal below. They look a lot better. Can we taste one of the new ones? Mm, much better. Much better. Mm. That's right. There's like this tiny bit of like crystallized sugar that comes through the dough. Mm. And I think what happened when it was wet is that, that that sugar in the dough sort of like dissolved and ran out of the dough. Yeah. They weren't even sweet anymore. No. They were just kind of fatty. Yeah. This is it. Mm. This is right. So good. I'm so happy with my new ones. Yeah. So we're giving each <coughs> batch about a minute. And if you give it too much, they'll completely fall apart. They'll just crumble. They need to be a little bit doughy, yeah, in the middle. Okay, but Jonas, people have some questions about you. Receive some private messages just about not our relationship, but just kind of like you. <laughs> and so some people ask if we speak English in our day-to-day life, which we do not. But I think it's because you speak English so well. No, there's a pretty good reason to that. Half Danish, half Dutch. I yeah. didn't grow up in Denmark. I uh, spent most of my younger years going to... English speaking middle schools and high schools mm-hmm. and I also studied abroad I studied in London and partly in New York <laughs> as well I moved around a lot well, I didn't move around a lot but when I was younger my dad's job required us to move around a lot um, and where did you live all over the place but yeah. for the majority of the time I lived in Switzerland where I went to an international school specifically in the Lausanne area um, but I also lived more exotically like uh, in, uh, in Vietnam Mm. And you told me that Vietnam is probably one of your favorite places to live. Yeah, I mean, if I could choose anywhere that I'd want to live again out of everywhere I've lived, Vietnam. Uh, well, not Vietnam specifically, but I live in Hanoi, and it's just, it's a country of its own, because it's so heavily influenced by the French, that it just has this really beautiful mix of European French cuisine and customs <coughs> mixed with this exotic flavor of Asia. Mm. And it's just really beautiful. Yeah, it's I've never been to Vietnam, but I would love to visit one day. We'll 100% go, you know, I have a lot of friends there. I'm sure we're more than welcome. We did, um, last week, we had one of your friends from Vietnam oh, visit us true. Yeah. in Copenhagen. Actually, two of them, Hannah and Wen And that was really fun to meet some of your international friends. I've also received some questions about how we met each other, because people think that you're so international, so they wondered how would they even meet each other. But since they now know that you've lived all over the place and you are in fact Danish. Maybe you want to tell them how we kind of met. <laughs> well, when I was done studying in the UK, I moved back to Denmark because my sister lived. She went to CBS, which is a university in Copenhagen. Copenhagen Business School. Well, she did her master's there when she decided to move back to Denmark as well. You know, I hadn't really lived in Denmark most of my life, so I thought it was kind of nice coming back to Denmark, getting in touch with my culture, and also being closer <laughs> to my parents, who had also recently moved here. They ended up not staying. They went to China immediately <laughs> yeah. when I came back. And then when I was here, I was freelancing. I took a bachelor in the UK where I studied graphic communication design, and I started freelancing in the marketing world. But I quickly learned that being new to a place, having zero network here, and not knowing anyone became very lonely. So mm. despite having set up shop and being uh, self-employed, I realized pretty quick that it was quite lonely, that kind of lifestyle. So and I was working a lot of hours, so I didn't really have any time to like meet anyone new. So I actually decided at that point, like, okay, well, the best place you can meet anyone is while studying. Well, I, in your age group, right? Yeah, in my age. I really wanted to start my own business one day, and I knew that to build a bit of brand credibility behind myself as a person, I also wanted to have more business understanding. So I decided to take an education that would allow me to have, have have that sort of backbone mm. and that's where and it all question, happened yeah and yeah. the question is how do we meet each other and we met each other through my first study program mm-hmm. and we both studied marketing management so and we went to the same class so yes in short i started a new bachelor in copenhagen and that's where i met caroline and it actually kind of builds up to a funny story because i don't remember exactly how it went but caroline asked me to go on a date but i was so busy at the time yeah i forced him on a date <laughs> because 
because he didn't get any of my clues. Yeah. I was kind of like hinting he, he would tell me about stuff he wouldn't entirely get into. But for like the longest time, I had this very important uh, deal that I needed to close for like a month. I, did, I wouldn't say I was ignoring you, but- But you took you, like 17 hours. Because I was literally working day and night yeah, on this, on this one. Yeah, to get back to my texts. <laughs> and you thought I was ignoring you, and yeah. you thought I was playing hard to get, but yeah. in reality, I was just really busy. Just received another batch from my mom. But back to the story, Caroline ended up forcing me on a date. Yeah, because you didn't get any of my hints. You would kind of like say cryptic things like, oh, well, it's kind of like just this because you were so busy. You didn't want it to get into detail about anything. Yeah. So I would hint like, oh, then you can tell more about that over coffee someday. And you would kind of brush it over your shoulder. Then I was kind of like, okay, now I'll just say what I want. So I just texted you like, I'm off Saturday from work at 6 p.m. Let's go on a date. You choose place and time and I'll be there. Yeah. And we ended up going on a date. Our first day was from like 6.30 till 2 in the morning. Yeah. Eight hour first date. I would call that a success. And, and then since then we've... we've uh, kind of been a couple. It's not the best outfit you've ever worn, but... <laughs> We just got back home from spending the weekend at Jonas's parents' place. Behind me, I have this week's grocery haul. I ordered the food to be delivered between 8 to 10 p.m. Kind of timed it with the drive home so we would be here half an hour before that, um, just so we could kind of land and get stuff into the apartment. But when we were looking for a parking spot outside our home, they were already here waiting for us to get home. They were kind of already on their way again uh, without having delivered our groceries. So it was a lucky strike that we did get to get our groceries for the week. This week, we're gonna have a whole roasted chicken in the oven an Asian inspired dish I usually make with um, chicken mince and some vegetables and sauce and then chicken filet for fajitas we're gonna have fajita balls and fajita wraps and then I got some eggs for my lunch and Greek yogurt for my breakfast we got avocados to make guac bell peppers for the fajitas parsnips I think they're called or turnips parsnips or turnips for the whole roasted chicken in the oven apples for snacking coriander for the guac mandarins for snacking these asparagus potatoes i think look very interesting blueberries for toppings for my greek yogurt and some romaine salad for the fajitas and some dill for the eggs so yeah so a little late night grocery haul so yeah that is it for this weekend in the life i hope you enjoyed and let me know if you want to see another format instead of these weekend in the life formats that i've been doing a lot lately kind of the only thing i've done on youtube maybe i'll do what i eat in a day or something else but yeah it was uh, lovely to show you guys another part of my life visiting jonas's parents in the country life make sure to subscribe like and leave a comment if you have anything you want to tell me or wish to know more about